IELTS Academic Map Task from Cambridge Book 14, Test 4. Today we're going to be looking at a model answer that I've written for a map task in the IELTS Academic Test. Now, in writing this task, I came across two big challenges, so I just want to identify these to you now because we're going to be looking at these two issues as I go over my explanation for this task. The first of these challenges was that it's very difficult to find an overall summary for this task and this is something that's held me back in writing a model answer. I couldn't initially see what an overall was for this task. Um, of course this presents a big problem if you're in the test, you've only got about 20 minutes to write it and if you can't identify an overall summary this is a big problem. Um, if it happens to you in a real test, I would say um, do your planning for the task, come back to it later at the end. Sometimes the overall summary can emerge later on. Um, but ideally you would know the overall summary before you start writing. And in this case I did because I had a good think about it for about a week or so and then aha, I finally figured out what I could write for an overall summary. We'll be looking at that very shortly. And then the other problem that I had, it's, it's difficult to write 150 words. My first draft was only 146 words. And this is because there's not really a lot of uh, data. There's not a lot of things to describe. There are not really that many changes that occur on this map. Um, so this is a challenge. You must write 150 words, otherwise you're getting minus one off your score for task achievement. Um, I do have a solution about this too, uh, and the solution is essentially to learn to um, estimate how many words you write per line, and then um, a, a quick way when you've written your task is to estimate how many words you've written, and then if you think you haven't written enough, try and add a few more because as I said, you're going to get penalized if you don't write 150 words, even if you cover everything in the task. Um, I usually advocate writing your overall summary as the first paragraph. One simple solution if you're in the test and you feel you might not have written enough words is just um, kind of write another, all, another overall summary at the end of the uh, report. Just write like a concluding paragraph. That's one possible solution. It's it's not ideal. I, ideally you would just have 150 words, but remember there's that minus one penalty off task achievement, so uh, better to find a way to write 150 words than leave it under length. Um, just quickly, another trick you could do is leave space between your body paragraphs. Um, like you, I advocate leaving at least one sentence um, between paragraphs, you can leave as many as you want, so you could leave three or four sentences blank between paragraphs, and then if you felt your answer was under length, you could come back and just add to each of the body paragraphs. Just find something else to comment on. In the case of this map, um, I tend to focus on the changes. Uh, if you wanted to extend your report, you could always just talk about something that's still the same, such as uh, uh, these entrances are still the same here. So you could describe how the entrance on Arnold Avenue and Eldon Street are exactly the same. Okay, which is kind of interesting. Actually, I do cover this, but I don't want to give away the surprise. The other thing that I'm going to do in this video is show you how you can use my website a little bit. So my website's IELTSanswers.com. I'm now on this website and I'm going to show you my instructions for planning your task one academic. Okay, uh, I do this for other types of tasks too, like the essay and the letter writing for the general test. So let's see if we can use my plan to uh, kind of work through how we're going to answer this question. So task one academic planning, steps in planning a task. Uh, let's make that a little bit bigger. 
So step one is to read and underline key vocabulary in the question and write words with the same or related meanings. Um, so let's have a look at the task instructions and see how we might do a bit of rephrasing. So here's the task in the Cambridge book. And this is what I mean by the task instructions here. This sentence here, not so much this. This is standard. This is on every single task written exactly the same way about selecting and reporting the main features, even if it's not a map task, even if it's a bar chart, this information is still the same. Okay, so it's this sentence here that we're interested in. Um, this is the same sentence here. The plans below show a public park when it first opened in 1920 and the same park today. So I've underlined some of the keywords. Some of them we're going to change and some of them we're not going to. Plans I rephrase to pictures below, so plans to pictures and public park. Public park I just rephrase to park. We can just lose the word public. It's not really that important. Most of these words are quite difficult to actually to rephrase, I think. Um, first opened in 1920. I'm just going to say when it opened in 1920. And in the same park today. Um, so I haven't really paraphrased a lot. Why? Because most of the words are not that suited um, to be paraphrased. Park is a park. Um, I suppose I could go to garden. but it's a little bit less precise, so I'm avoiding that temptation. You can use um, word. Word has a synonym function. So what else have we got? We could say common, not as good, green, not as good, estate, not as good, garden, as I said. But it's just a little less precise. Botanical gardens, no, that's too specific. Grounds, too general. Country park, doesn't say it's in the country. I wouldn't really want to say that square. Um, Squares are normally more about concrete than greenery, and this seems more like a green park to me. So that's kind of why I've kept park the same. Sometimes when I'm marking papers, I see all of paraphrases, and you can over paraphrase. Really, what the examiner is looking for is that, well, first of all, they haven't just copied this word for word because many people do that, and then they're just looking to see if you can change some of the words and possibly some of the grammatical structures. Um, which you can see I've done. I've, I've actually shortened this down, and, and perhaps that's partly why um, I had trouble with word length. If, if I had sort of done more of a word by word paraphrase, that's one way um, that my report could be a little bit longer. Okay, so now we've done our step one, and on to step two. Um, most of the tasks are about data, about numbers and percentages. So I've got here, um, check whether the data is about percentages or numbers. Well, it's not about either. It's about changes uh, to a map. So maybe we can think of uh, step two as really being, um, see what the data is, see what the task is about. And this task is about changes to a map. Okay. Step three, brainstorm key points for our answer. So now what we're going to do is, Take a look at our map and see what the key features are. There's not a lot of key features on this map. It's not a very detailed map. There just aren't too many things on the map. Um, so what I did initially was compare the two maps and um, look for what is different. Okay, so compare the two maps, see what's different. Um, so and all these things in blue are different. So we can see, for instance, that the stage is gone, um, and these seats are gone, and this rose garden is gone, and they've been changed um, with an amphitheater, and this looks like some stadium seating. Uh, the rose garden's still there, so I've put that in green on the first map. You, you should do something similar in your test. You should take a pen or a pencil and circle the changes. Maybe and use triangles. If you don't have different colors, use a different shape for things that stay the same. This allows you to see what's going on in the map. If you just start writing and try and rely on uh, being able to identify these features without a clear guide beforehand, it's extremely challenging. 
So all these things in green have stayed the same. These entrances are the same. And then everything in blue has changed. Um, you, you might possibly put numbers on this too. If I were to put numbers the way I've structured my report, I'd be going one, two, um, and then I come over here, three, four, five. So you could put numbers in, in five. That's wow. It's not many features. Normally you want to have at least five main features. Uh, really about seven would be ideal here. So now that we've got some sort of idea about what's changed and what's the same, uh, we're pretty much ready to start writing our report. Okay, now ideally before we start writing, uh, we want to work out our overall summary. As I said, if you can't see it, then just leave it. So initially I, I could not see what the overall summary was going to be. And and the reason was because I normally with a map I'm looking for something like um, uh, that there are a lot a lot more feet more features than before or more man made items and less natural ones or more facilities with a park. I would expect maybe more facilities, maybe the addition of toilets. Um, and drinking facilities and I've seen people answer this way they tell me oh there's more facilities well are there um, it's sort of arguable like maybe we can say that the uh, the cafe here is a facility and this play area is a facility and this parking it's a facility so I, I think there is an argument that we could say there are more facilities but I just kind of struggle with that a little bit. Actually, I'm kind of warming up to it now. I just think it's a bit risky to say it. That's, my hesitation is that it's risky that the examiner may not feel that there are more facilities um, than before. Um, for instance, I mean, there was a glass house before. Is that a facility? And now it's a water feature. So is that a loss of a facility? So just not totally convinced on the facility thing. But I think if you did write that, um, as an examiner, I would accept it, but I just feel it's a bit risky and that some of the examiners aren't going to like it. So let's see what I ended up coming up with. What I came up with is that, um, well, here's my rephrase first. The two pictures illustrate a park when it opened in 1920 and today. So that's my rephrase. And then the overall summary. Overall, every feature of the park has been changed except for the entrances and one of the three rose gardens okay so i think that's an effective overall summary and i feel that it's relatively risk-free that most examiners are going to accept this and remember only one examiner marks your task so you want to have something that the majority of examiners are going to feel is acceptable and not take a risk. And that's why I didn't like saying that there are more features or more facilities. I think it could be valid, but I think it could also be risky. Um, and then let's look at the next thing we should be doing in our task. Uh, so, well, we should really be doing this before we start writing. Uh, you, you could do it after your introduction, I suppose. You could knock out the introduction and then think, okay, how am I going to structure the body of the task? I don't really recommend it, though. I think the best way is to do all the planning up front so we wouldn't have actually started writing yet. I just wanted to show you how my overall summary was written. So let's have a look. How should we structure this task? Well, um, one way you can do it is to have a paragraph for the original view of the park and then another paragraph for how it changed and I think that's a perfectly okay summary and it will um, avoid the problem of not having enough words you'll, you'll find that you'll need more words that way and I think it's fine for getting to seven but in terms of getting to eight and possibly nine um, one of the requirements see if we come back to the task instructions selecting and reporting the main features and making comparisons. We can make a lot more comparisons when we structure a different way. If, if you just structure like paragraph, it'll be hard to have a lot of comparisons.
it'll be mostly descriptive in nature whereas the way I'm going to show you will be um, involving more comparisons and highlights so uh, what I like to do is to try and find a way to divide the map into two and that's, this is really my advice with every task try and find a way to divide your information into two or possibly three parts and really with this one the easiest way is to just divide into um, the left side of the map and then later on the right side of the map so we're going to have paragraph paragraph right so we want a paragraph for the left side of the map we want a paragraph for the right side of the map and we want to indicate to the reader how we've structured our task and we can do this by the opening phrases that we use to start each body paragraph and really once we've decided how we're going to structure the task we're done with our planning phase and we can go on to the writing and in terms of how we'd write this task we would um, first do what we've already done which is to paraphrase the uh, introductory sentence that we're given which we've done and write our overall summary um, if you couldn't see what the overall summary was you could leave a gap here so that you can come back to it or you could just write your overall summary at the end of the essay that would be fine too just start with the word overall rather than in conclusion it's not really a conclusion that's for essays what the examiner's looking for here is an overall summary by the way this is the most important sentence of your whole report so then back to our structure let's just recap because I've said a bit now so we want to have paragraph about left side paragraph about right side and this is how we signal this to our reader so we use this phrase here to start our second paragraph looking first at the far left side of the image okay so that's telling the reader look over here far left over here and then later we're going to talk about the far right which is over here okay third paragraph turning to the far right side of the plans okay so this paragraph tells the reader that it's about the left side this one tells them it's about the right side of the plans okay and then so in this second body paragraph we're going to be describing this we're going to be describing how the stage and seating area have become the amphitheater and then about how the fountain has become the rose garden so let's see how I discuss this and by the way if you want to just read the essay later you can look on my website uh, I'll put a link in the description if you want to just read the essay you can read it later at your leisure okay what we said already looking first at the far left side of the image the seats and music stage have been converted into a large amphitheater with stadium like seating in the center of the park the two entrances remain the same but the water fountain has been transformed into a rectangular shaped rose garden with seating around each side okay so that covers the left side of the map for us then we want to guide the reader to the other side of the map let's have a look at the other side of the map so the other side of the map is we're going to start over here um, I, I kind of wanted to move from here to here but the reason why I didn't do that is I would have had to describe that uh, so I, it'd be confusing because I'd be talking about this rose garden and talking about this rose garden and it just sounded like a whole lot of rose gardens so for that reason I didn't move from here to here which would have been nice for the reader you sort of read across and then you go to here uh, because of this multiple rose gardens I've actually drawn the reader over to here and I'm going to describe this this and then this so we've got the children's play area we've got the water feature and then this really really important don't miss the underground car park if you leave that off your task you're going to limit your score for task achievement okay, because you haven't covered a key feature and this 
map does not have a lot of key features, so there's no reason to not include everything. So it must include this. So let's see how I do this. Okay, so I've got both on here now. I've got the, the map and the description. This should help understanding a bit. So we're talking about here, here, the underground car park. Turning to the far right side of the plans, so telling the reader to come over here, the pond has become a play area for children and the glass house is now a water feature. Below the water feature, um, an underground parking area has been built. It is below because it's, it's under the ground. So you might say, oh, no, it's here. It's not under or something. It's on the Eldon Street. No, it's not. Look at the arrow. And it's an underground car park. So it has to be sort of under here. Unless it was really tiny. I suppose you could argue, oh, it's really tiny. It's just here. There would be one car. So we can imagine the car park is all under here. It could be under the whole park. We don't know. Okay. So um, below the water feature, an underground parking area has been built. And this can be accessed by turning left off Alden Street. I sort of added all this because my answer was too short. So I added a little bit here about turning left off Alden Street here. Alden Street, turn left. Um, <clears throat> and then we still need to cover this cafe next to the entrance on Arnold Avenue, which is up here. The Rose Garden has been replaced with a cafe. That's it. We're done. 150 words exactly. So as I said, I did struggle a bit trying to get enough words for this task. So that's the end of this task. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to me. Uh, that way you'll be able to get updates whenever I release new videos. I'll also put some links at the end of this video in case you want to have a look at some of the other videos that I've created. Best of luck with your studies. Oh, I'll also put a link to my website in case you would like to check that out um, to see the planning instructions or uh, maybe you want to look at other things such as model answers for other writing tasks or some of the other skills. For instance, I've got some of the latest questions in the speaking test and also some model answers for those questions. I also have two useful services that I offer to you. One is a writing correction service and the other one is a mock speaking test service. Both of those are detailed on my website. I'll put links for those in the description below.